thank you for joining with me. We are in A Course in Miracles workbook for students, part one of the workbook, and this is lesson 198. Only my condemnation injures me. Injury is impossible, and yet illusion makes illusion. If you can condemn, you can be injured. For you have believed that you can injure, and the right you have established for yourself can now be used against you till you lay it down as valueless, unwanted, and unreal. Then does illusion cease to have effects, and all it seemed to have will be undone. Then are you free, for freedom is your gift, and you can now receive the gift you gave. Condemn, and you are made a prisoner. Forgive, and you are freed. Such is the law that rules perception. It is not a law that knowledge understands, for freedom is a part of knowledge. To condemn is thus impossible in truth. What seems to be its influence and its effects have not occurred at all. Yet must we deal with them a while as if they had. Illusion makes illusion. Except one. Forgiveness is illusion that is answer to the rest. Forgiveness sweeps away all other dreams, and though it is itself a dream, it breeds no others. I said that sentence wrong, so I will repeat it. Forgiveness sweeps all other dreams away, and though it is itself a dream, it breeds no others. All illusions save this one must multiply a thousandfold. But this is where illusions end. Forgiveness is the end of dreams because it is a dream of waking. It is not itself the truth. Yet does it point to where the truth must be and give direction with the certainty of God himself. It is a dream in which the Son of God awakens to his self and to his Father, knowing they are one. Forgiveness is the only road that leads out of disaster, past all suffering, and finally away from death. How could there be another way when this one is the plan of God himself? And why should you oppose it, quarrel with it, seek to find a thousand ways in which it must be wrong, a thousand other possibilities? Footnote 432 Jesus' question here assumes that this is exactly what we have been doing, opposing forgiveness, arguing with it, trying to find holes in it, and seeking alternatives to it. Is it not wiser to be glad you hold the answer to your problems in your hand? Is it not more intelligent to thank the one who gives salvation and accept his gift with gratitude? And is it not a kindness to yourself to hear his voice and learn the simple lessons he would teach instead of trying to dismiss his words and substitute your own in place of his. His words will work. His words will save. His words contain all hope, all blessing, and all joy that ever can be found upon this earth. His words are born in God and come to you with heaven's love upon them. Those who hear his words have heard the song of heaven, for these are the words in which all merge as one at last. And as this one will fade away, the word of God will come to take its place, for it will be remembered then and loved. Let me read footnote 433, and as this one will fade away, the idea here is that all of the Holy Spirit's words will merge into one, a one, that is not specified, and then that one will re be replaced by the Word of God. And as this one will fade away, the Word of God will come to take its place, for it will be remembered then and loved. This world has many seeming separate haunts where mercy has no meaning and attack appears as justified. Yet all are one, a place where death is offered to God's Son and to his Father. 
You may think they have accepted, but if you will look again upon the place where you beheld their blood, you will perceive a miracle instead. You may think they have accepted, but if you will look upon the place where you beheld their blood, you will perceive a miracle instead. How foolish to believe that they could die. How foolish to believe you can attack. How mad to think that you could be condemned and that the Holy Son of God can die. The stillness of yourself remains unmoved, untouched by thoughts like these, and unaware of any condemnation which could need forgiveness. Dreams of any kind are strange and alien to the truth. Yet what but truth could have a thought that builds a bridge to truth which brings illusions to the other side? Today we practice letting freedom come to make its home with you. The truth bestows these words upon your mind that you may find the key to light and let the darkness end. Only my condemnation injures me. Only my own forgiveness sets me free. Footnote 434. This means only my condemnation of others. Only my own forgiveness of others. Do not forget today that there can be no form of suffering that fails to hide an unforgiving thought. 435, Workbook Lesson 193, Paragraph 9. Does pain seem real in the perception? If it does, be sure the lesson is not learned and there remains an unforgiveness hiding in the mind which sees the pain through the eyes the mind directs. Nor can there be a form of pain forgiveness cannot heal. 436, and I'll repeat that whole sentence. Workbook Lesson 193, Paragraph 7, Forgive and you will see this differently. These are the words the Holy Spirit speaks in all your tribulations, all your pain, all suffering, regardless of its forms. So let me repeat that sentence. Do not forget today that there can be no form of suffering that fails to hide an unforgiving thought, nor can there be a form of pain forgiveness cannot heal. Accept the one illusion which proclaims that there is no condemnation in God's Son, and heaven is remembered instantly. The world forgotten, and its weird beliefs forgotten with it, as the face of Christ appears unveiled at last in this one dream. This is the gift the Holy Spirit holds for you from God your Father. Let today be celebrated both on earth and in your holy home as well. Be kind to both as you forgive the trespasses you thought them guilty of and see your innocence shining upon you from the face of Christ. Footnote 437, Mark 11:25. And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also, who is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. In the above reference, forgiving another's trespasses leads not to God forgiving us, since he has already done that, but rather to the unveiling of our own innate innocence. Now is there tranquil light across the face of earth, made quiet in a dreamless sleep. And now the word of God alone remains upon it. Only that can be perceived an instant longer. Then are symbols done, and everything you ever thought you made completely vanished from the mind which God forever knows to be his only Son. There is no condemnation in him. He is perfect in his holiness. He needs no thoughts of mercy. Who could give him gifts when everything is his? And who could dream of offering forgiveness to the son of sinlessness itself? So like to him whose son he is, that to behold the son is to perceive no more and only know the father. 
In this vision of the sun, so brief that not an instant stands between the single sight and timelessness itself, you see the vision of yourself, and then you disappear forever into God. Today we come still nearer to the end of everything that yet would stand between His vision and our sight. And we are glad that we have come this far and recognize that He who brought us here will not forsake us now. For He would give to us the gift that God has given us through him today. Now is it time for your deliverance. The time has come. The time has come today. Join me for the commentary by Robert Perry and Alan Watson. Lesson 198 for July 17th. Only my condemnation injures me. The purpose of this lesson is to go past your argument with forgiveness and truly embrace it. If you accomplish this, it will be cause for great celebration in heaven and on earth, for it will mean that today your deliverance has come. We will do a morning and evening five-minute meditation, ideally 30 or more. I will do a separate meditation if you'd like to join me for that. Again, we have no specific instructions. We are told today to practice forgiveness. The lesson assumes that we are familiar with forgiveness, but that we have been opposing it, arguing with it, and trying to find other ways to happiness. So today we're to make a major step forward in ending our argument with forgiveness and accepting it as our way home. Now is the time for your deliverance. To take this step forward, we are given extremely powerful lines as the focus of our practice. Only my condemnation injures me. Only my own forgiveness sets me free. I love that. One way to use these lines would be to call to mind various people in your life and then apply these lines to each one specifically. Or you may want to search your mind for situations which you are experiencing pain or stress. Identify the person who seems to be the source and then repeat the verses. After this forgiveness practice, you may want to use the remainder of your practice period for meditation. Again, please join me for my 15 minute or more meditation, if you would like. And then hourly, one or two minutes as the hour strikes, apply the lines that are given today. Only my condemnation injures me, only my own forgiveness sets me free. So apply those to the happenings of the previous hour that that have you still wrapped up in their chains. And then when tempted to succumb to any form of suffering, realize your pain comes from condemning a condemning thought and say, only my condemnation injures me, only my forgiveness sets me free. All right, so commentary by Alan Watson. When I condemn another, I am offering injury to myself. How is that so? When I condemn anyone, I am wishing injury on them, some form of punishment for their wrong. At the very least, my condemnation states that the person is less worthy of love. I am believing, therefore, that I can injure, even that I would be justified in offering injury or withholding love. The principle I have established by this belief, however, can be turned against me. I can be injured too. If I measure my love to others according to my perception of them, I am affirming this is how love works. Therefore, I am asserting that God measures his love to me based on my appearance or my current state of character development. Do I really want that? In reality, injury is impossible. Neither God nor my true self as his creation can be injured in any way, nor have they been. But illusion makes illusion, and the illusion of condemnation makes the illusion of injury. We will continue, therefore, to experience injury until we lay down condemnation as an undesirable tool, unwanted and unreal. 
There is a principle that lies underneath the surface of this lesson that is really quite important in understanding the Course. Injury is impossible, so is condemnation, so what seems to be its influence and effects have not occurred at all. Thus, as the Course says in many places, the separation never happened. There is no sin, there is no death, sickness is an illusion, and even our bodies in this world do not really exist, as there is no world. We are not really here where we think we are. We are asleep in heaven, dreaming of exile. The apparent problem has already been solved, and indeed it never happened. This is the truth on the level of what the Course calls knowledge or heaven. And yet what? For there is an and yet to the Course's teaching. It does not state the ultimate truth and stop. It has something to say about the apparent illusion. It affirms with meticulous care the, unreal, the unreality of the illusion, and yet it deals with it. What seems to be its influence and its effects have not occurred at all, yet must we deal with them a while as if they had. What are the influence and the effects of condemnation, every form of injury imaginable? The apparent effects of our self-judgment include the making of the world and of bodies as well. These are the things, then, that we must deal with as if they have really occurred, as if they had really occurred for a while. Time itself is an illusion, yet the Course talks a good deal about saving time and urges us to use time wisely particularly in the practice instructions that are part of these lessons. It knows time is illusory, and yet it deals with it as if it were something real, using the very illusion to lead us out of illusion, using time to bring us back to eternity. We meet illusion with illusion. We meet the effects of condemnation with forgiveness. In reality, there is nothing to forgive because nothing happened. But to undo the illusion of what happened and so become aware of the unchanging reality, we need the illusion of forgiveness. The Course affirms that this world is illusion, and yet for a time it teaches us to deal with it as if it were not an illusion, as if it had really occurred. The only way to thus deal with it is to forgive it, to proclaim to it that there is no condemnation in God's Son. Forgiveness is the bridge that brings illusion to the truth, that provides the escape passage out of illusion entirely. I want to repeat that, it's so important. Forgiveness is the bridge that brings illusion to the truth, that provides the escape passage out of illusion entirely. And that is Alan Watson's commentary of Lesson 198, Only My Condemnation Injures Me. Thank you so much. Please join me for the meditation of this lesson.